This setup is an AC 220 volts PID control for temperature. In previous videos, if you remember, we have made a PID temperature control for DC voltage and then a triac AC voltage control. So a lot of you guys asked me for a combination between these two videos. So today we'll read the temperature with a thermocouple, detect the zero cross of the AC voltage, create a PID control and change the fire angle at the triac gate and by that control the temperature of this 220 volts heater that I will use in a future filament extruder project. Remember to subscribe and activate the notification bell in order to see my future videos and if you consider helping my projects check my Patreon page. So that being said, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. These are the steps that we will follow today. First, we will use a full bridge rectifier and a photocoupler to detect the zero cross point of the main AC voltage. Then we will read the temperature as before with a thermocouple and the MAC6675 driver. We will also have an LCD to print the values and two push buttons in order to increase or decrease the set temperature. Then we apply the firing pulse at the input of an optocoupler and that will activate the gate of a triac that will control the amount of power applied to the AC voltage heater. Remember high voltage AC could hurt you, so be careful. Ok, so you have a list with all the components below and if you would like to make a PCB for this project, you might want to check JLC PCB services, which is the sponsor of this video. You could get cheap and very fast professional made PCBs, from a few prototype boards to high volume productions. I use their services a lot these days, since I can get my boards from only $2. Upload your Gerbers to jlcpcb.com, order and receive the boards in a few days. Ok guys, so let's start by analyzing the main signal and be very careful working with high voltages, because those might hurt you. If you're not sure about something, don't connect the main input and always use electrical protective tools. Here on the oscilloscope I have the main AC sine wave. This here is the point we have to detect, because that is the zero cross point, where the wave passes from negative to positive or vice versa. Now I add a full bridge rectifier and this is what I get. Both the positive and the negative part of the wave on the positive side of the wave and we double the frequency. Now I add a photocoupler as in this schematic and I connect the output to the Arduino digital pin D8. Now here is the photocoupler output signal compared with the main input. It is a 5 volts peak to peak so now this signal can be read with the Arduino. All we have to do is to detect the low part of this signal because that's the zero cross point as you can see here on my oscilloscope. We have a low value at each zero cross. Ok, now let's see the next part. Now I connect the thermocouple to the MAC 6675 module and connect the SPA pins to the Arduino. Be careful, the thermocouple has polarity. Now I upload a very simple test code with an LCD that you will find below and as you can see I can read the temperature. So now I could create the PID control. The PID will change the firing time applied to the triac. As you can see in this video from the past tutorial, the faster I activate the firing pulse a bigger amount of the wave will pass and that means more power. This is the final schematic for this tutorial, so have it in front of you. Now I mount everything on a breadboard and let's see some tests. I have the Arduino Uno. Then I have the full bridge rectifier with the photocoupler to detect the zero cross of the wave. The thermocouple well placed on the heater with some captom tape so I could read its real temperature and then it's connected to the MAC 6675 driver and finally the track and the optocoupler connected to the input of the AC heater. I also have these two push buttons with pull downs that will increase or decrease the set temperature and the I2C LCD screen in order to print the values of the temperature and the set point. 
Now I upload the code that you will find below and let's give it a test. The initial temperature is 100 degrees, but you could change that later in the code. Now press the buttons and increase the values of the set point. Connect the main 220 volts input and then the temperature will rise till it reaches the set point. Ok, so it seems that the temperature control works. Now let's analyze a bit the signals on the oscilloscope. Here is the firing pulse and the output from the triac applied to the heater. When I change the set point, the amount of the wave that passes increases till the temperature is reached and then the PID will control the fixed value. As you can see, the delay for the firing angle gets bigger as I get closer to the fixed 150 degrees and when reached it stays there. Also, if I blow air on the heater with this tube, the power will automatically increase in order to maintain the same temperature. So, the project works. As you can see, the firing angle changed and the temperature stayed the same. I've tried different temperatures and it seems to work quite well. Ok, so in my case, the set point step is 5 degrees, but you could change that in the code if you want. The code is simple. Remember to install the I2C Liquid Crystal Library and the Mac 6675 in order to be able to compile this code. You have those libraries below ready to download. Read the comments in the code in order to understand more. But in short words, it goes like this. This interruption on digital pin D8 will detect the zero cross of the main AC signal. Next, we create the PID value and map that from 1 microsecond to 7.4 milliseconds and that will be the delay between the zero cross detection to the furry angle pulse. The rest of the code is for the push button read. Measure the temperature and fix the set point with the buttons. Compile and upload. So, there you have it. I could now set the temperature and it will stay there thanks to the PID control. The temperature sometimes has a 2 or 3 degrees error, but for now that is a good result. In the future I will build my own filament extruder using these heaters to melt the plastic. But that project is not ready yet, so stay tuned for more. Ok guys, read all the comments in the code, see the schematics on my webpage electronoops.com and if you have any question, leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, check the past two videos on PAD and Triac Control in order to know more. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you have learned something new. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also, click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.